Benito. My name is Les Stark. I'm the executive director of the Keystone Cannabis Coalition, and I'm a Pennsylvania hemp historian, author of the book Hempstone Heritage, a book about the history of the hemp industry in Pennsylvania. And uh, through our efforts, myself and my partner and girlfriend, Erica McBride, uh, we lobbied uh, Senator Mike Fulmer and Judy Schwank, and they introduced the Pennsylvania Industrial Hemp Act, also known as Senate Bill 50. And that was the purpose of our uh, press conference and media briefing here that we had today. And we heard from several uh, great speakers, Sean Patrick House from Hempsel Pretzels, and Adam Thompson, an interested hemp farmer from Lycoming County. And we also had Ben Droz from the national organization called Vote Hemp. And we had these guys from um, uh, True Hemp Clothing and Wink and Sun Hemp came and vended. And uh, we just, we had... A lot of good positive press coverage today here. We had Pennsylvania Cable Network, PCN, uh, Reading Eagle, and Fox 43, and I think there was a couple other media outlets here too. But the basic purpose of today's um, media briefing and conference was to get the word out about this. You know, we've been talking about hemp for uh, a couple decades now. I've been in this for the better part of 20 years. Um, I published my book 10 years ago in 2000, or, uh, 2005. But all this time we've been talking in vague, hypothetical, and theoretical terms that we have to legalize hemp. Now for the first time we have legislation that's actually being introduced and we have something concrete to work with. It's called Senate Bill 50. So when we want people to educate their, their state senators, their state representatives, uh, even Governor Wolf, although we do know that Governor Wolf supports it. If we get Senate Bill 50 to his death, he will sign it. But that's what we want people to, uh, to talk. We don't want anybody, people to talk in vague and general terms anymore. We want people to talk about, we want their state senator to support Senate Bill 50, also known as the Pennsylvania Industrial Hemp Act. And that's what our goal of our event here, because uh, we've talked about it long enough, and uh, now it's time for action. We want seeds in the ground uh, by 2016. We know that we're not going to, the bill's just being introduced now, so there's no way, we don't think the bill will actually get passed in time for farmers to get seeds in the ground by Hopefully May. Hopefully we'll have the bill passed so farmers can get seeds in the ground by spring of 2016. Now, when we do, we'll be two or three years on behind states like Colorado and Kentucky uh, that have already been growing hemp for a couple years. But Pennsylvania has uh, some of the richest soil on earth. We have an uh, incredible agricultural industry. We have the potential in Pennsylvania to become world leaders in the production, uh, manufacturing, and marketing of industrial hemp. And that's our goal, is to reach the true heights of our fullest potential that this plant has in our agricultural industry. So we hope everybody uh, gets on board. Remember, support Senate Bill 50, also known as the Pennsylvania Industrial Hemp Act. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, Guys, welcome. we have Hernan with True Hemp Clothing International, and he's going to tell you a little bit about the event today and uh, what he brought to the table. How you doing, everybody? Um, from True Hemp Clothing International in Miami, Florida. I'm here with my good friend Douglas Flight of Wink and Sun Hemp in West Virginia. I'm visiting West Virginia for a little while, doing some hemology, digging up hemp history, and we came by today to support our good friend Les Stark and the uh, Keystone Cannabis Coalition, try to bring support to their cause here. Uh, every state that passes is a win for us all, so it's important that we support each other, and that's why we're here. We got to see a lot of people, a lot of people came by and asked questions, and got to see a lot of uh, beautiful hemp, hemp stuff, uh, you know, hemp bags, and uh, tons of hemp growth. Here, let me show you something some of you guys know from my previous video, but here's an example of 100% hemp. It just won't burn. Just like hempcrete, it won't burn, it won't break. So we're just here spreading some hemp love. Um, some hemp seed oil, some hemp seeds, you got herds, small bags, uh, CBD rich creams, uh, bath salts, energy drinks, we've got a ton of paper. Uh, so just basically showing support, we brought a bunch of products. And from France, last of the line unfortunately, we just don't run out of them. By the way, my name is Doug from the Hemp in West Virginia. And I'm Compass's partner in crime here today. <laughs> These are the residuals of the hemp shirts that we sold at the event today, supporting Les and Erica with the hemp land security. Yeah. With that, 
I've never tried okay. hemp all just to... So, um, first I wanted you guys to take a look. This is a hemp silk shirt. So hemp can be 100%, which is what true hemp clothing is, but there's also a lot of beautiful blends. Uh, you can see the shine, and then it can, you can make virtually, well not virtually, literally, anything that we have in textiles. A pillowcase, socks, ropes, uh, shirts, pants, socks, uh, shoes, anything that you can wear, anything that you could eat, anything that you could use, your home can be hemp. So with that, I'm going to give you a couple quick pieces of hemp history. 206 BC, the Chinese would take lime, tungsten oil, and chopped up hemp, which would be modern day hemp herd. And they would take that mixture and put it on their old fishing nets to, to make them more rigid. Um, another example would be 1596 is the birth year of Pocahontas, the famous Indian princess. She, around the age of 8 or 10, was weaving hemp jewelry and clothing. John Smith, the famous British explorer who later came, was saved by her and brought her back to uh, Europe and that whole story with Pocahontas. She was a hemp jewelry maker, our famous Pocahontas. Um, hemp history is world history. It's part of every part of our world. And I'll leave you with, from 1740 to 1840, Russian hemp was of the highest quality and yield in the world. It was so good and so vast that they provided 80% of the hemp in the Western world. So with that, take a look at the site. The hemp history timeline is there from 26,900 BC, the first artifact ever found in humanity. And you can see just how ancient that plant is. It's miraculous that plant is the oldest, most ancient industry, and is also the newest industry. So, hemp for industry, invest in hemp and save the earth, and we're here to celebrate the miracle plan. Thank you so much. Awesome, thank you. Thanks.